Hi everyone, welcome to SF Live this Thursday night at 5.30. I'm your host, Rebecca Taft, like you don't already know that, because you watch the show every week in utter suspense of what we are going to be talking about. And today we have a guest, which we've had on before, and we're very excited to have them again. Um, they're from the Bravo Study, which aims to discover ways to help young women help keep healthy and reduce STDs. Um, so we have Nicole Trainer, who is a research assistant with the Bravo Study, and we also have Purnima Madivanan. And I Hi. said that correct. I'm so proud of myself. Who is the research coordinator for the study? So thank you for being here, ladies. Thank you for having oh. us. Oh, good. So what is the Bravo study? Go ahead. You guys don't even know. I mean, you looked at each other like, what? <laughs> what, what is that? Um, Why are we here? The purpose of the Bravo study is we're trying to reach out to women between the ages of 18 to 25 years old. And we're trying to determine of germs that cause um, bacterial vaginosis. And we'll get more into that later explaining the... Um, um, explaining bacterial vaginosis, but we're trying to see if those germs that cause BV actually make it more likely for a woman to um, um, get chlamydia or gonorrhea. And as of now, one out of every 10 women actually um, will obtain BV in their life. And so what we're trying to do is determine whether we need to treat women with asymptomatic BV or not. Um, and I'll, um, Dr. Pranima will actually go into more details about um, the aspects of BV and why BV is so important and why doctors are interested in trying to determine um, the implications of BV in young women. Okay. Well, before we get to that, where how is the study being conducted? Where is it being well, conducted? Actually the, how is the, it? the study is being conducted at the San Francisco City Clinic. Okay. And so the great thing about this study is it's it's formulated as a clinical trial. However, it's a home screening for bacterial mm -hmm. vaginosis. So a lot of times people say, oh, I don't want to be in a clinical trial. I have to continue to come to the clinic all the time. But the great thing about this study, and I really want to emphasize this, is that you only come to the clinic one time to do the screening process to see if you're eligible. And the great thing about it is whether you're eligible for the study or not, you come down and you are screened for bacterial vaginosis. So at that point, you know your sexual health. You know that whether you have BV or not. And so so um, we encourage women, whether they want to take part in the study or not, to come down and be screened so they can um, they know more about BV and they also um, are aware of their sexual health. So once they actually qualify mm -hmm. for the study, um, the rest of the study takes place from home. And so it's a 12-month study and um, we send out um, collection kits to the participant every two months and so they return six kits to us so every time we send a kit to them they collect the specimen from the privacy of their own home which is great they return the kit back to mm -hmm. us to our Pittsburgh lab and then we send them either a visa gift card in the mail or they um, some of the girls who are already participating in the study they like to come down to the clinic and pick up their cash whichever way uh, works best for them Wow. So I also want to mention that this is a national study. So San Francisco is just one of the sites that is participating in this study. We're funded by the National Institution of Health, mm -hmm. which is a huge government organization. I'm sure many people are familiar with that um, particular organization. Mm -hmm. But um, there's six, uh, five other different sites all over the country. So all the way to from Alabama to California, there will be a total of 1,800 women enrolled in this particular study. So it's a great way for young women to understand their health and and also be a part of a huge um, research project that's going to open a lot of doors in the future for medical, um, new medical technology, new um, and the ways we actually deliver healthcare. Wow, that was quite an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is BV? Well, um, BV is actually characterized by an imbalance of the bugs that we have in our vagina. So, <gasps> what? usually. We have as, bugs as, here. as contrary to what we believe, we are actually human beings are considered to be the largest reservoir of bugs mm -hmm. in, in the world. So as such, we have some good bugs and some bad bugs in our vaginas. And the good bugs are the lactobacillus, which are actually secreting acid and keeping our vaginas sterile. And for various reasons, these good bugs can die off, leading to the overgrowth of the bad bugs. And when, when there is this imbalance, mm -hmm. which is uh, tipped off, it's almost like a cascading mechanism. And many reasons why the good bugs can die could be because of um, the menstrual fluid and menstrual blood in the mm -hmm. vagina, or it could be semen in the vagina, or it could be diet, it could be stress, it could be hormones. There are a lot of different reasons why the good bugs can die out. 
And when the bad bugs take over, that's the time that some of the women can experience a smelly white discharge. Mm -hmm. But only half of the women, only 50% of the women who have this condition would actually experience the symptoms. Mm. So the downside to this is if we continue to have unprotected sex, we are at an increased risk of actually picking up the real sexually transmitted diseases such as gonorrhea and chlamydia. And so is BV something that you get tested for uh, like in your yearly screening or do you have to ask for it or no one even does it or well, how would you know if you've been tested for it or have it or don't have it or well, what's going on down there? Uh, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> in the United States they say approximately one in ten women who are sexually active are going to be affected by bacterial vaginosis. and. It's a very simple way to get tested for bacterial vaginosis. If uh, the physicians can just do a simple vaginal swab and look under the microscope to see if we have something called the clue cell. Or we also find out, uh, there are two different ways. We have a clinical diagnosis and then we have a lab diagnosis. Clinically, the clinician can find out if a woman has white discharge and if they looked at the pH of the vaginal fluid and if it's greater than 4.5. And if they looked into the microscope and saw a, a clue cell. So any any one, three of the four criteria could be diagnosed as bacterial vaginosis. And is it different from like a yeast infection or it sort of sounds the same from what I know or how is it different or the same or what, it, how would you it know? It is different because yeast infection is more of a fungal infection. The mm. characteristics of the discharge are very different. Mm. It's almost curdy white discharge is what one would experience if they had a yeast infection mm -hmm. versus if a woman had bacterial vaginosis <coughs> It's very characteristic of the smell. It's a fishy huh. smell that one would, uh, one can actually find out that they would have a fishy odor and then they would have a watery, milky, white discharge. So they're different because this is a bacterial condition, whereas uh, uh, candida is a fungal infection and the, the characteristics are very different. And the yeast infection doesn't put us at an increased risk of picking mm. up other STDs as compared to BV which does put us at a risk of picking up gonorrhea, chlamydia, and HIV. And is it sort of an ongoing state? Once you have it, you have it? Or is it, can, it, can you have it and then it goes away? Or is it sort of something that's there forever? So the, the thing with bacterial vaginosis, although it's one of the earliest uh, conditions that we have been researching about, we don't know enough about it. In terms oh. of the natural history of bacterial vaginosis, there, there are times when a woman can clear it mm -hmm. and then she doesn't pick it up again. But we have a huge proportion of women who are not able to clear it completely. So they keep coming back mm. again and again with recurrent episodes of bacterial vaginosis. And it's a huge problem for them. And so do you know why they are at an increased risk for STDs or is that the whole point of the study? Well, right now, exactly. there is enough information and l enough research that has shown that women who have BV are at increased risk of STDs. Mm -hmm. And that's why we also know that some of the groups in the United States, particularly young African-American women, are at increased risk of STDs. They're also at increased risk of having BV. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons we're trying to focus in and trying to get more young African-American women to come in and get screened. Hmm. And... Uh, we don't know enough about bacterial vaginosis and that's one of the reasons why we're trying to understand why are the women who have recurrent bacterial vaginosis different than the women who are able to mm. clear it up? What, exactly. are, what, what, what are the risk factors that these women have who are getting recurrent episodes as compared to women who just come and they're able to clear it up? So is that something that you look at in your participants? Do they fill out surveys or informational forms, sort of Actually, stuff like that? Um, so just to add to what Pranima mm -hmm. said, and another reason why we're so focused on these particular women is because these women sometimes are asymptomatic as well. Yes. And what I mean by asymptomatic is they don't experience the milky discharge or the fishy odor right. that occurs with BV. Mm -hmm. So the women who actually have the symptoms is fine because they come in and they get treated for right. it. So we can identify that population. The population we're unable to identify are the women who have BV but do not have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. So that's the population we are really focused on because they won't come to us and get treated. We have to seek them out. Mm -hmm. And currently we don't treat women with asymptomatic BV. The protocol is because it can go away just like as right. Prenima said within an eight hour period, we don't give them antibiotics. However, the research does 